I hope and trust you have your Bibles this evening. As always, if you do, please turn to John chapter 9, John chapter 9, verse 4. We're going to look at John chapter 9, verse 4 this evening. It's going to sort of set the stage for other passages of Scripture that we're going to look at. And basically what it's going to be is our service for Christ, doing the will of Christ while we still can, okay, while we're still able, while we still can, redeeming our time, serving the Lord while we still can. I know sometimes myself in uh, at work, especially in the spring and in, in, in summer, when everything's at its strongest for work for my for myself in in, in early fall, there's always a saying that we got to get this done. We're burning daylight, okay? We're burning daylight. It was always a saying we we would use a lot of times on on the job sites where we are burning we are burning daylight. So we've we've got to get it done before before night shows itself and we can do nothing else. But let's see what John has to say this evening in, uh, in the book of uh, John chapter 9 verse 4. And let's see what it has to say. It says in verse 4, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night comes when no man can work. As long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. Well, this is a, a, a quick reminder, I guess you could say to, to, to me and to you, that we too must be doing the works of the Lord while we still can. Jesus is mentioning it. He says, I must do the works of him that sent me. I must do the works of my Father who has sent me. Okay, Jesus' earthly ministry is three, three and a half years in the sense of the, what, what what we have in in his in his in his in his moving about like he was rapidly but and when he said this he was a mere few months away from the cross the crucifixion was was coming into sight it wasn't it wasn't far away whatsoever so he says i must work the works of him that sent me while it is day the night's going to come when no man can work. The big question for us is this. What about our own ministry? What about our ministry at Bass Chapel? What about your ministry, your own individual ministry in your own life? Okay, if you go to another church and you're watching this, what about your ministry in your church? What about, like I said just a second ago, what about your ministry, your own personal ministry, whatever it is? Whether you do ministry work on the mission field, whether you do ministry work at, at, at work, or whether you do ministry work in, in your where you go to and get educated, Educated, or whether you go somewhere else and do ministry work throughout the week, okay? Just same thing. What about your ministry? Are you using your time wisely? Is your time being used wisely for the glory of Christ? Do you do you seek the Lord's will in ministry? Do you do you long to see okay what you're going to be doing in the future for Christ? Is that a concern of yours? Do you keep that foremost in your mind? Is it always okay? How can I how can I serve Christ next week? How can I serve Christ next month? How can I serve Christ in three, four months from now? How can I serve Christ? What can I do for Christ? Lord, what can I do for you? Can I can I do this? Can I do that? And are you in prayer for that? Are you saying, Lord? Months from now or weeks from now, okay, Lord, I, I seek to, 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 to serve you. I seek to use my time wisely. Christ is talking about his service for his Father. He's saying, listen, he says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. Meaning this, I must hurry up. I must get it done. Time, again, burning daylight, all right? I must get it done. I must hurry up and do the work of the one that sent me. There's, no, there's not time to spare. In our laid-back culture in which we live, okay, we live in a very laid-back culture, in, a, in a, especially in the church. It seems like everybody, not everybody, but most people are waiting around for the next man or next woman to stand up and do something, 
okay? But may that not be us. May we never be accused of that. May we be the ones that are standing up and serving the Lord while we still can, while it is still daylight, while there's still things to be done, while things still can be get on. Why? Because the night is coming. Turn to John chapter 12, 12 real quick. John chapter 12, verse 35. Remember, I said, I hope you have your Bibles, John chapter 12, verse, verse 35. All right, listen, don't make a habit of coming to church without your Bible. Don't make it a habit of coming and hearing God's Word without your Bible. You start that habit, it's a horrible habit to be in. All right, so keep your Bible close by. Anyway, John chapter 12, verse 35. Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while it is, light, is the light with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goes. Okay, now, back in verse 35 of John chapter 12, Jesus is saying, Yet a little while is light going to be with you. Who in the world, what's he talking about? Jesus is saying this, it's only but for a little while longer that I'm going to be with you. He's talking to his disciples. He's saying, my, I'm, 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 I'm foretelling my departure. In the near future, I'm moving on. All right? I'm doing my Father's will. The cross is coming in view. Okay? And he says, let a little while is light with you. Walk while you have the light. In other words, serve Christ while you still can. All right, same thing for us today. Serve him while we can. All right. Serve him while we're still able. Serve him while you're still physically able. Still serve him while you still can. Desire to serve him. Okay, lest darkness will come upon you, all right? For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whether he goes. All right, now listen, he was taken in a cover of darkness, right? I mean, a lot of things happen when it comes to the crucifixion in the cover of darkness, all right? Lest darkness will come upon you, for he walks in darkness knoweth not whether he goes. And it's, I mean, you can just look at it in the everyday living sense back in, in John chapter 9 verse 4 he says there's going to come a time when night comes when no man can walk you can just when because it's going to be night coming no man can walk you can just do any everyday aspect of life all right listen there's not much you can do in darkness without light right there, there's really not much you can do in darkness without without a form of light all right so Again, who's the ultimate form of light? Christ is the light of the world. And what he's saying, listen, serve me while you can, while you're still able, for darkness is coming. For darkness is coming. And, you know, and, and when it, when it comes to the disciples at, 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 at this day and time, there's been some people that have, that have said, well, you know, this could have meant that that. He was going to be on a cross. He was going to a cross, and his disciples were going to be incapable of, of doing anything without him until they were filled with the Spirit of God. So was he alluding to that? Very well could have been alluding to it, all right? But we do know, and through other interpreters that have said, we do know that, you know, you, you serve your best in light and verse darkness. But anyway, it's all about the service of Christ. It's all about the ministry for him and using it wisely in understanding and that that your your ministry for the Lord Jesus Christ, okay, it may it not be in vain. It's 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 not vain. Use it wisely, like I just said in Ephesians chapter five, verse verse fifteen through through seventeen. Let's listen, listen to Ephesians chapter five, verse fifteen through seventeen says, "See then that you walk circumspectly, or that you walk deliberately. Okay, that you that you're well guarded in your walk." in your service for Christ. Don't be a fool, but be wise, all right? Have a have a walk, have a believer's walk of wisdom. Be wise in your service. When you're serving Christ, you're wise in your decisions. You're making decisions based on prayer. Your decisions are prayerful decisions. Your decisions are not based on emotion, all right? I mean, your, your, your emotions come and go, okay? We've talked about this in, in church plenty of times. Your emotions come and go. They're like this. They're all over the place. I mean, one minute you're here, one minute you're there. 
If you, if you don't understand what I mean, just go to a sporting event or just watch a ball game, okay? I mean, people's emotions are all over the place, all right? So your emotions come and go. He says, see then that you walk circumspectly, well-guarded, deliberate, not as fools, but wise. Serve Christ wisely. Your ministry, serve him wisely. All right, that's kind of what he's saying again. Redeem the time because the days are evil. Redeem the time. Redeem every step. Take advantage of the time he's given you in service for him. Don't let the time pass by. Redeem the time. You've only got so many hours of the day. Use them wisely. All right, I mean, I know when I go to, I mean, you do it at work. Okay, I guarantee you, you do it at work. You use your time wisely at work. For most of us, when we go to work, you know, we're, the, the, the clock's a big aspect of, a, of, of our daily work life. I mean, you've got a certain amount of things to get done at a certain amount of time, and you try to do them and then go home or, or however your schedule lays out. It's just the reality of it. Okay, redeem the time wisely. Be wise with your time because the days are evil. Redeem the time. Serve Christ wisely. Don't be slothful with your service. Don't be slothful with your service for Christ. Don't be slothful in your, in your listening to preaching. Don't be slothful in your listening or your reading of Scripture. Don't be slothful in prayer. Don't be slothful ultimately in your service for Christ. That's what Paul is telling the church at Ephesus, okay? To, to, to be well guarded, to be deliberate in everything that you do when it comes to to service for Christ, right? Be deliberate, okay? You're, you're deliberately doing something. You're, you're, you're making the best out of every move in your service for Christ. And, and, if, and if you look at the history of, the, uh, of, of Paul and how he was, he was very deliberate in a service for Christ, okay? And we, we know, we see in, in his writings, a few of his writings, we've talked about this in the past, where he, he had very little patience with people that were not deliberate in their service of Christ, people that can be slothful, pe people that can be Johnny come lately, people that can just come and go with that mentality in ministry. He, he didn't tolerate it very well. He didn't tolerate it. We see a lot of that today in ministries. Okay, people just, just come and go as they please. They do what they want. They do a little here, do a little there. Let me tell you something. If, if Paul didn't tolerate that mentality very long before he, he made comments about those people. All right, and that's kind of like what he's saying here to the church at Ephesus. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Okay? He's saying, listen, I don't want you to be unwise. I want you to have some wisdom about what the Lord's will is for your life when it comes to ministry. Don't be unwise. Don't be, like I just said, don't be slothful. Serve him well. Serve him mightily. Do what he's called you to do. If you know what he's called you to do, do it to, to, to your utmost. Give it everything you can give to it. All right? That's what Jesus is saying back in John chapter 9, verse 4. I must do the will of my Father while it's still day. All right? The cross was in sight. He was a mere months away from this crucifixion. He knew that. He understood that. And he had to get the Father's will done. Everything was deliberate. And man, we can learn so much from that. We can learn so much from being deliberate in our, in our ministry, in our service for the Lord Jesus Christ. Be, like I said, being deliberate in our prayer, being deliberate in our study, and, and, just, and just serving the Lord. And, the, and a lot of times, we're so, we're so used to, to churches just, just this, 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 this here and there attitude in ministries and this, this entertainment mentality in ministries that, that when we do get around somebody that's deliberate in their service for Christ, it's, I mean, it's almost to a lot of people like, whoa, what's wrong with him or he or she? And there's nothing wrong with them. It's just that they are deliberate and they're serious about their walk with Christ. And that's what Paul's saying. Be serious. That's what Jesus was saying in, in, in John, the Gospel of John. Be serious in your walk with the Father, in your service for the Father. Do it wisely. Be serious, okay? Don't be, unwise, un, don't be unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Seek the, will's Lord in your, the, the, Lord, the will of the Lord in your ministry. Seek it out. 
or what do you will, okay? Like I said, if if, if for the Lord's ministry in your life, Lord, what do you seek for me to do? Okay, if, if you go at it half-heartedly seeking, seeking it, you're not going to find it, all right? You'll be jumping here and there. You'll be like a little rabbit jumping around, and you'll never get anything accomplished spiritually speaking, okay? So walk wisely is what Paul's talking to the Ephesians about in Ephesians chapter 5. Similar to what Jesus is making mention of in John chapter 9, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is still day. I must hurry up. We must hurry up. We must have a zeal. A zeal. Remember what James said. Your life is but what? Remember James said your life is but a vapor, didn't he? He said your life is but a vapor. It's coming and it's going. It's, it's not going to hang around long. Okay? So make the best out of it for the glory of Christ. Before you know it, you will you will you will you will move on to a to a to 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 a different life. I mean, a, a, a different time in life at the end of your life, or you you'll you'll pass on. So make the best of it while you still can. Okay. Be obedient. Be obedient in your service for Christ. In John chapter, or I'm sorry, in, in Acts chapter chapter twenty two. Verse 10, in Acts 22, set 10, listen to, listen to what it says in, in, in Acts 22, 10. Make sure everything's good here. Acts 22 said, and I said, what shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto me, arise and go into Damascus, and there it shall be told thee of all things which are appointed for thee to do. Okay, here we've got the conversion of Paul. Okay, the conversion of Paul has happened, all right? And, 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 and Paul tells a story of, of his life and his conversion in Acts chapter 22. And, and, you, and you got divine direction going on. You got the account of Paul's conversion. And it says in, in, in verse 10, and he said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto me, Arise and go into Damascus, and there shall be told of thee which things are appointed for thee to do. His obedience, right? His obedience to pick up, to go and serve the Lord Jesus Christ without question, without doubt. This is where the Lord has called me to be. This is what the Lord has called me to do and to go out and to do it to the utmost of his ability. That's it. Obedience to service. Okay? Obedience to service. It never amazes, never ceases to amaze me. Man, people can be obedient. People are obedient to their bosses. People are obedient to their work. People are obedient to 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 the government. People are, I mean parents are obedient to their kids. Kids are obedient to their parents. Okay, we're obedient to the bill collectors to uh, to ensure we pay the bill each and every month on time. Uh, however, you want to look at it. But yet, when it comes to being obedient to the to, to the words of Christ, to this to this book, I mean, people take it as well, take it or leave it mentality. I mean, you see it all the time. But obedience is a key of of of, of maturity when it comes to believers to the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Be obedient in your service to Him. Be obedient to Him. It's an honoring service. It's a service of, of, of honor. It's, a, it's an honor to serve this holy God. It's an honor to serve this righteous God for who He is. He is the Lord of lords and He is the King of kings. And it goes right back to you examining your ministry for Him. In, in him, okay, how is your ministry? Are you obedient? Are you walking wisely? Are, are you walking well guarded? Are you walking well prepared in your service for him? Okay, are you, are, are you seeking to, to serve him? Because listen, this, this ministry, this thing has been prepared for you from the beginning. You say, well, I don't, what do you mean? Been, been prepared for me. In Ephesians chapter 2, this is what Ephesians chapter 2, verse, verse 10 says, For we are, his, we are his workmanship. We're created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained for us, that we should walk in them. Service prepared for me, okay? There's, God has ordained things. Remember, God has purposed things. We looked at that this morning when we looked at, in, 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 in the Psalms. God has, God has 
we looked at Psalm 1, 139, okay, the, the, the purpose of, of God in David's life. And we even looked at, you know, just, a, just, a, just for a second or two, we, we mentioned Daniel, the purpose of God in Daniel's life, the purpose of God in, in Joseph's life. We looked at the purpose of God in Esther's life, all right, the purpose in their lives, ordained purposes, times that were set apart, all right, and understanding of this is of who the Lord God is and our service for him, for we are his workmanship. We are created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained these things to happen, that we should walk in them. Without a question, it's not up for debate is what Paul again is saying to the church at Ephesus. He's saying, listen, this is not up for debate. You should walk in them. You should serve our God, the Lord Jesus Christ, with every bit of your heart, mind, and soul that you possibly can serve him with. Okay, give him everything that you can give him. He's given you everything. Should we not give him everything? Kind of what Paul's saying. He's given you everything. Should we not give him everything? And that's what Jesus is, is to, the, to, to his disciples. His disciples were about to have a serious crash course, if you will, here in a few months when Jesus Christ makes his way to the, to the, to the cross of crucifixion to where, to where he, is, he, is, he, is, he, is, he is murdered, he's, he, he's killed, for the sins of the world, okay, and, and, and the disciples are about to have a serious, like I just said, crash course in, in service for Christ. Without Christ, the Spirit of God will indwell them sometime later, not too long after that, and, and, and they're, and they're going to learn something new, and it's as if Jesus here in John chapter 9 is, is preparing them, as always, for the ministry, Preparing them as always for the ministry. Paul makes mention in 1 Corinthians chapter, I think it's 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 15, verse uh, 1558. 50, we'll jump up to 57 in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. But thanks be to God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. Paul says, listen to the Corinthian church. He's saying, listen, your ministry, your ministry, remember, your ministry should be steadfast. Your ministry should be unmovable. It should be done while there is still light, okay? It, always abounding in the work of the Lord. And know that your labor is not in vain for the Lord. Now, if you're in ministry now for the Lord God, you kind of understand what, what, what Paul's talking about. Because I guarantee you, if you're not in doing much ministry now or if you will be doing much ministry in the future, however you want to look at it, I guarantee you, you've, you've, you've been through what I'm about to say and I'm about to say this. There's plenty of times in ministry and work for Christ where you think to yourself, am I just spinning my wheels? Am I just spinning my wheels? Am I just, is, is, just, is this just being done, just, just be done? Am I, is it, I mean, not that you're going through the motions, but am I just spinning wheels? Is anything being accomplished? Is, this, is all this being done in vain? Anytime you, you seek out to serve Christ and seek out with your heart to serve Him and honestly serve Him and let it be about Him, it is never in vain. It's never in vain. 
But in your humanness and in the warfare that you go through and the enemy attacking constantly in our minds and in our hearts and, and telling us, ah, what you're doing is in vain. Oh, what you're doing is a waste of time. You just, you just need to stop. You just need to go do this. You just need to go do that. You're just wasting your time. They're not listening. You're just wasting time. Look, you have no converts or look, look, nothing's coming out of it. That seems to be fruitful, spiritually speaking. Just lay it down. It's just a waste of time time. But remember what Paul tells the Corinthians. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know that your labor is not in in the Lord, okay? Your reward is sure. Your reward is steadfast. You will be rewarded someday for your service for the Lord God. This is a promise to the workers of Christ. Your zeal, your call, your service will be one day rewarded. You won't see it this side of heaven, all right? The reward that Paul's talking about here, this is a, there's a reward sure and steadfast that's, that's coming when you pass from this life to the next, all right? There's a reward that's sure and steadfast, and this reward is coming. And, and you're rewarded in ways today in your service for Christ in, 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 in different ways. But Paul's kind of like a little bit of an encouraging word here that your labor is not in vain. You're not serving Christ in vain. But give thanks to the Lord God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Even in our failures, even in our times when we feel like eh, we're not really getting much done, Paul says, listen... Listen, our victory comes through the Lord Jesus Christ, right? Our spiritual victory comes through Him. You're sitting there and you're in ministry and you feel like, man, I'm just, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? Is this what I'm not supposed to be doing? Paul's telling the Corinthians, he's saying, listen, your victory comes through Christ. Your victory is in Christ, all right? And, you know, we all go through it, don't we? We all go through times in our life and in service for Christ where, where we, we wonder, am I doing what I'm called to do? Okay, is, am, I, am I doing what he's, what, he's, what, he's, what he's called me to do? Is this, is this what he has called me to do? And am I, am I doing what, what the Lord God has called me to do? Listen, we all go through it, but we, the key is to stay in focus and keeping our minds and hearts steadfast on Him. And He will place us, He will move us in His time and as He wills for His glory and for His honor. Because this service for the Lord Jesus Christ, like I said before, it's a glorious service. It's a, it's a, it's, it's an honoring service. It's, it's, it's a joy to, to. to to, to serve such a God as the one we are serving. And Ephesians chapter 4 verse 1 says this, I therefore am a prisoner of the Lord. I beseech you or I am begging you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called. Okay, Paul says, listen. Walk worthy, walk worthy of the vocation, walk worthy of the ministry that you're called and that you're placed in, okay? Walk worthy of it. This is what you're called to do. Paul says, I'm a prisoner of the Lord. In other words, I mean, listen, I, 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 am, I am bound to the Lord Jesus Christ. Paul says, I beg you, to be just like me, bound to Christ, serving Him with what you've got, serving Him, setting out to serve Him, being bound to Him, not being bound to this world, but being bound to serve Him for who He is, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Serve Him. The, the vocation for which you are called with all lowliness, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another in love. Be careful. Paul saying, listen, in your ministry, all right, Jesus was a classic example. He did it, of course, like nobody else could do it. Of course he did because he's the redeemer of the world. 
He's sinless, but he gives us a classic example of, of service for the Father. He did it with lowliness. He did it with meekness. He did it with long suffering. He had love for other people, and he, 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 he was never arrogant about his service for the Father. He did it in such a classic way. He did it in such an amazing way, and that's the example set forth. Remember when we looked in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21 this morning, Jesus, you know, when he was, uh, when Peter, when he was talking, talking about that Jesus set the example for us when he's talking about persecution to 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 the believers that were scattered in Galatia, Cappadocia, Bithynia and all the in, in Asia and, the, and those lands out there but he says Jesus was the ultimate example is not Jesus the ultimate example of how ministry should be done hey Paul did his ministry well we know that but it it didn't come close to the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ to the Father. It didn't come close. Jesus was superb at it. Okay? With all loneliness. He was loneliness. He had meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another in love. Okay? He strived to keep the unity in the bond of peace. He understood that. What, 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 an, what an amazing example we have in the Lord Jesus Christ when it comes to service, when it comes to ministry to the Father. The disciples had an, an amazing, they had a, a, a privilege unlike any others, okay, of, of men that's ever walked the face of the earth. They've got the, they had the, 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 the ability, they were chosen to walk, to sleep beside the, 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 the Lord Jesus Christ in his humanity and for him to teach them. And, but man, look at the look at the blessings we have today. I mean, where we are told we are a blessed people today. He says, "You see," but the Lord said, "You see those of you who see me are blessed. But how much greater are those that don't see me and believe? How much more blessed are they?" Look at the blessings we have. We do not. Do we not have an amazing amount of blessings to ourselves and 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 who we are from the Lord Jesus Christ? We're blessed with this book from Genesis to Revelation that consists of books and letters. Okay, to to be able to to dive into and and to serve our Lord with such a way, all right, to learn how to do it. And to do it effectively, to learn and to see that it is done effectively through the spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ. To learn that. And the disciples would see that. We may mention about that at the, at the beginning. The disciples would, would see, they would eventually see that, that, wow, you know, after the Lord Jesus Christ, okay, was gone, he said, he said, I will never leave you comfortless. I'm going to send you a comforter. And he sent them the comforter of the Holy Spirit to fill them, to lead them, to guide them in such a way that, that they never expect it to happen. All right? And this is the beauty of ministry for the Lord Jesus Christ. Much pressure comes with it at times in our lives. Much times we get to the point where we're like, man, man, this is this is exhausting. But but you know what? That, that's the beauty of serving Christ is that is is that you get your privilege, you're chosen for such a task. Don't waste it. Don't waste the task. Walk wisely. And again, back in just just thinking about walking wisely again back to what paul was telling the ephesian church back in chapter five don't be as fools don't walk unwise be wise about your ministry be wise about your service for christ and we see this throughout scripture a lot of times in the new testament serving christ wisely redeeming the time understanding don't don't be foolish with the time okay don't be foolish with the time that he's given us if you jump down to verse 8 of ephesians chapter 5 and be not drunk with wine where it excess but be filled with the spirit okay 
if, if you're going to have excess of anything in your life, if anything is going to be of excess in, it, in your life, let it be the excess, the excess filling of the Spirit of God moving in, in you and guiding you and in, 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 in directing you in your service for the Lord Jesus Christ. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual psalms. Paul's getting very personal here, okay? Singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord. He, he's, he, he's doing it inward now. He's going inward. He's getting personal. He's saying, listen, may your ministry, may your ministry, may you do it in singing and speaking to yourselves in psalms and in hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. When you serve the Lord Jesus Christ, may you may you do it with a joy. May you do it with a with a with a thrill. May you do it with singing. May you make melodies in your heart for the Lord, because you have been chosen for such a purpose, for such a task as this. Tying right back together with what we learned this morning, all right? That it is a joy to be chosen for such a task. He purposed, the Lord God purposed before you were even conceived. He purposed that you would do the ministry you were doing. You say, well, well Pastor, I, I, or Dave, I don't, I don't know what the ministry I should be, where I should be serving the Lord Jesus Christ now. I really don't know. I just kind of vacillated through my Christian walk for the last 10 or 15 years or however long. I really don't know where I need to be serving him, grounded in service for him. I'm just kind of like a fish out of water in the deal. Okay, if that's how you are, then then my advice to you, okay, is be in much prayer and ask the Lord, Lord, where do you will for me to serve you? Where does does your is my gift at in service for you? Where do you will for me to, and see what interests you? You know, I mean, this is the interest you have in whatever the field of ministry you have and the interest you have. If it's a heartfelt interest, okay, if, 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 if it's a heartfelt, if you have an interest in a certain part of ministry and, it, and it's truly from your heart and it, it, it's, it's, not a, it's not a selfish, it's not a self-gaining interest, but it's, it's truly a heartfelt interest. It's, 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 it's truly unto unto him it comes from your heart psalm 37 4 says delight yourself also in the lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart if you're delighting yourself in the lord jesus christ if you're delighting yourself in service for him if you're delighting yourself in worship of him all right and, and your desire is to be in a certain ministry within a church listen he the reason why you have that desire is because he's given you that desire he's called you to that ministry do it do it well serve him well do it wisely for his glory for his honor for him to be praised for him to be exalted for him to be uplifted that's exactly what the psalmist is saying delight yourself in the lord and then he will give you the desires of your heart commit thy way unto the lord trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass it's a promise it's a promise we serve him, and when we serve him, we serve him with with everything we should serve him, with everything we have have in ourselves to serve him with, and not be slothful. Listen, we have got enough Johnny come lately Christians filling the pews in America today. We don't need no more. We got plenty of. We got plenty of people that just come and go to church and worship as they please, make excuses as to why they can't come, okay, whether they blame it on doing this or blame it on doing that, okay, I've said it a hundred times, you'll do what's important to you. I've said it before, if there was a hundred dollar bill laid on every pew, I guarantee you the church would be filled each and every week, all right? You do what you want to do. We've got enough people that just, that just vacillate in their service for Christ. We've got enough of them. We need more men and women that are sold out for the glory of Christ. And that's what Jesus, as we close, that's what Jesus is telling his disciples in John chapter 9. I must do the works of him that sent me while it is day. 
He turns to his disciples and he says, listen, the cross is in view. The cross is over the horizon. I see it. It isn't but a few months away and I must do the work. We must hurry now and do the work of the Father who has sent me. It must be done now. It must, it must end well. It must, we must finish well. And may you and I, as, as we wind down our lives, whenever that will be, we don't know, but may we finish well, okay? May we serve Christ tomorrow and, and think as if we won't be here next year, and may we finish well, if you will. May we go out and serve Him with everything we've got within ourselves to glorify Him. May we do the same. May we have the same zeal, the same drive as the Lord Jesus Christ is telling the disciples Disciples, we must, I must do the works of him that sent me while it is day. Because the night comes when no man can work. Look at your life. We're closing for the evening. Look at your life. Look at your ministry. Stop with, if, you, if you've got excuses, okay? Stop with the excuses. All right? I mean, we're... It's tired of hearing about the excuses. Serve him, serve him well. Stop with the excuses about your about your vacillating in worship. Stop with the excuses about your prayer time. Stop with the excuses about your reading of God's word. Stop with your excuses about listening to preaching, okay? Stop with the excuses and just be serious in your service for him. You sit, you sit there and say, well, I am serious in my ministry for the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, continue to be serious. Don't get knocked off the tracks. Okay, continue to serve him. Continue to worship him and what he's called you to do. Let us pray. Father, we love you and we, and we, and we thank you and we glorify you and we praise you. Lord, for you alone, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings, and we know that. But Lord, just like you told the disciples many, many years ago, I must do the will of my Father while it is still day. For night comes when no man will be able to work. Lord, may we, may we have that same attitude. That attitude we have to get the work done for you. If everybody did within the church what they were called to do. Yes. How much work we could get done. If everybody gave financially to the church that could give. How much work could be done. Not just here, but abroad. Yes. In other nations. We are the richest nation in the world how much work we could do for the glory of Christ throughout the world. We love you and we thank you and praise you. Bring us back again Wednesday night to look upon your word. And as always, if there's somebody listening here this evening that knows nothing of you for salvation, Lord, Lord, may you lead and guide and direct them in such a way for salvation. We thank you and we praise you. For it's in your name we glorify. Amen. My, my little closing words are have a blessed, blessed evening. All right? Go and serve your Lord. Go and serve your King. Serve Him well. Serve Him with much zeal. All right? And if you got a few excuses sitting in your back pocket as by why you can't do this and can't do that, take those excuses out of your back pocket, roll them up like an old paper ball and throw them in the trash because that's all they are is excuses. All right, have a wonderful, wonderful evening. God bless.